Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and in this video clip I want to show you how we can analyze data from a first order reaction kinetic. Now let's assume we have data. So in this set of data we have on one hand the time and we have um, a reactant and we already know that uh, it should follow a first order reaction kinetics. And how we know that? Well, uh, I will show you that in a different uh, video. Now, what we want to do in this case is we want to calculate basically these uh, missing uh, numbers here, x, y and z. And in the following, uh, this is how you do it. First of all, we write down our uh, solved differential equation for a first order reaction. So this could be ln r final over r initial equals minus k times t final minus t initial. So that would be one form of the solved differential equation for the reaction where we have the reactant is consumed. And we can tell that the reactant is consumed because it's getting smaller and smaller uh, with an increase in time. So the reactant gets smaller. So the first thing that we need to do in this case is we need to find k. And uh, Obviously, we don't have any values for k, but we can rearrange this equation here so that we can get k. So I can write minus k equals, I just bring the, the time uh, to the other side, and I get ln r final over r initial divided by t final minus t initial. So... Uh, I've, I've solved uh, this equation for k. Now, how do I get the numerical value for that? So the easiest way is to make a table for that. And uh, so obviously I need r final, I need r initial, I need t final and I need t initial. And we need to bear in mind that these need to be um, data pairs. So let's get started. Let's say we have r initial and the corresponding t initial. We have the r final and the corresponding t final. So what can I use for r initial and t initial? Obviously I can use something where I have both, both values given. So the first data point I, I'm missing x so that's not a good thing but the second data point that's 10 minutes into the reaction and my R is 77.8. So I could use this data set here for my R and T initial. Likewise, I can use the last full data set, that is this one here, uh, for my R final and T final. So I can write that down. My R initial is 77.8 and my T initial is 10 minutes at this time. My T final is 100 and the corresponding concentration of R is 5.2 millimolar. And I now have all the information that I need to calculate this uh, k. So all I need to do is need to put these data into this equation uh, to get my k. So let's do that. We write ln r final. Let me write this down again over r initial divided by t final minus t initial equals minus k. And I get ln r final, we said this is 5.2, divided by r initial, that was 77.8, divided by 
divided by t final that was 100 minutes minus 10 minutes and that gives me minus k. So what I need to do is I calculate this first, so 5.2 divided by 77.8 and this gives me 0 0.067 roughly and 100, 100 minutes minus 90 uh, minus 10, this gives me 90 minutes. Uh, so I take the ln of 0 0.067, that gives me minus 2.7 divided by 90 minutes, and that gives me my minus k. So I calculate k as just get rid of the minus, k equals 0 0.03 minutes to the minus 1. Now with this rate constant we can uh, start to tackle our first uh, unknown here. So we are looking for a uh, starting reactant concentration we have the corresponding time so all we need to do is we can write down our modified solved equation and we can use any of the equations but uh, one is particularly useful here so we can write for example r final divided by r initial equals e to the power of minus k times t final minus t initial. So what we are looking for is the r initial and uh, again it is probably a good idea to have a little table here where we can put in numbers so uh, we can uh, say for example r initial t initial that's the corresponding one r final t final and for r initial, that is our x, that's the thing that we don't know. The corresponding time to this one here is very clearly zero minutes, so that is zero. And we now can choose another uh, data set uh, to, um, to use in uh, this uh, equation for the final time. So we can use, for example, this one here, 100 minutes. We could use any other one where we have a complete data set. Obviously we can't use this one here because we don't have uh, the concentration here. So I usually use the, the last one that is uh, good. So we have 5.2 millimolar and 100 minutes. Now all I need to do is rearrange this equation here so that I get R uh, initial. So I bring that to the other side, I bring the whole thing to that side and I get R initial equals the final concentration divided by e to the power of minus k times t final minus t initial. And all I need to do now is put in the, the numbers that I've got, so obviously for uh, our initial, that's our x, and uh, put in the other numbers, so I get our initial equals our final, that's this one here, 5.2, divided by e to the power of minus, and we just calculated our k, so that is 0 0.03 times T final is 100 minutes minus T initial was 0. So that's this one here. So we've got R initial equals 5.2 divided by E to the power of minus 0 0.03 times 100 minus 0. That's 100. So for this one we get 5.2 divided by e to the power of uh, 100 times 0 0.03, that is minus 3, and this one here is roughly 0 
So we have for our r initial, r initial equals 5.2 divided by 0 0.05, and that is 104 millimolar. So we need to use the unit, which is this one here. Now let's quickly check whether this number makes sense. So we can roughly guesstimate that our R initial here must be larger than this point here because uh, time has lapsed. So we know that our R initial must be larger than 77.8 millimolar. We get 104 millimolar, so it fits into our uh, consideration. Now for the next question mark here. Let's go for uh, this one here. And we can basically do exactly the same thing. Uh, we can write down our uh, rate, our solved rate equation, r final over r initial equals e to the power of minus k times t final minus t initial. And what we can do now is we can treat this y either as a final concentration or we can treat it as an initial concentration. So if we treat it as a final concentration, then we would use something up here as our initial concentration. So we could say this is our uh, initial, so that's initial and that would be final, or we can say this is initial and this would be our final. I usually don't use things that I just calculated, so I don't, I wouldn't use this one here as my uh, initial data set. Um, because it could very well be that I made a mistake and then I would have uh, a carry-on mistake. So in a way it is it doesn't matter uh, which way around whether I use the black or the red approach so just simply uh, let's let's go for the the black approach here and say okay uh, we use that as our final so we have oh, I should make this black R initial, T initial, R final, T final. So for our R initial, I use 77.8. And corresponding to that is 10 minutes. R final, I don't know, that's our Y. And the T final, the corresponding is 40 minutes. Now, all I need to do is rearrange this equation so that I get uh, R final. And that's quite easy in this case. So R final equals R initial times E to the power of minus K T final minus T initial. And all I need to do is now uh, plug in these numbers. So I've got R final equals R initial, that is 77.8 times e to the power of minus k, that is minus 0 0.03, that is something that we calculated earlier. T final is 40 minutes minus 10 minutes. In this case, that's my t initial, so I just uh, calculate that, so that gives me 30 minutes here, so R final equals 77.8 times e to the power of minus 0 0.03 times 30. So this gives me uh, minus 0 0.9 here. So I've got R final equals 77.8 times e to the power of minus 0 0.9. If I put that in the calculator, this gives me 0 0.407 roughly. So my R final 
equals 77.8 times 0 0.407 and that gives me roughly 31.6 and the unit is the same unit as here 31.6 millimolar. Now before we get too excited, does this uh, value make sense, this 31.6? We know that our unknown here must be between 57.6 and 17.4 millimolar, and 31.6 is in between, so it would make sense to accept this uh, value as uh, correct. Now for our last unknown, this one here, we are looking for the time. Again, we write down our uh, solved rate equation. So we would use ln r, r final over r initial equals minus k times t final minus t initial. Again, we can very easily solve for t, that's what we are looking for, we are looking for time here. So we would get t final minus t initial equals ln r final over r initial divided by minus k. Now let's do our data table again. So we can say, right, uh, we have an R initial, we have a T initial, we have an R final, and we have a T final. Now the T final, that's, that's, that's this one here, that is our set, so we don't know that. And the corresponding uh, reactant concentration is 1.2, so that's this one here. And we uh, choose our R initial. Again, I do not choose something that I've calculated earlier apart from the rate constant because I might have made a mistake. So I use the next best uh, option here. So for my uh, time initial I have 10 and the corresponding concentration is 77.8. So all I need to do now is plug this into this equation here and I get t final minus t initial equals ln and my r final is 1.2 divided by 77.8 divided by minus 0 0.03 and uh, a minute to the minus 1 that is what I've done what I've calculated earlier so now let's calculate that so we have t final minus t initial equals ln 1.2 divided by 77.8. This gives me uh, 0 0.015 roughly divided by z minus 0 0.03. And the ln of this one here so equals ln is uh, minus 4.17 divided by minus 0 0.03. And this gives me uh, roughly 139 minutes. So t final minus t initial equals 130 minutes. Let me write that down. t final minus t initial. So I want to know what the final is and I know that t initial is 10 minutes so I bring that to the other side and my t final is 139 minutes plus the 10 minutes from my t initial so for my t final I get roughly 149 minutes. Now mind the unit, it's minutes, which makes sense because it's the same unit as here. And again, reality check. We want to know whether this is a, a viable result. So we know that for this reaction to go down from 5.2 to 1.2, it must, the time must be longer than 100 minutes. And very clearly, 149 minutes, this one here is larger 
than uh, our 100 minutes here than the, uh, the, the, the last data point. So this basically gives you an idea how we can calculate all these variables that might turn up in uh, one of these rate uh, data sets.